Hello and welcome. My name is Dana. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. So today we are sitting down and I feel like I have to have like my fancy voice. I maybe should put my glasses on because this is the start of a new series. This is the history of, and it's going to be like history of dot, dot, dot. And then afterward, it's going to be usually a skincare brand, um, maybe just a sunscreen brand if they only produce sunscreens. But that is the gist of this series. So I'm going to be going through the history of the brand, how we got here, what are their main products, maybe what are their controversies, you know, things like that. And then also I'll speak at the end about basically where I see the future being for their brand. It doesn't mean I know <laughs> I don't work for any of these brands, but it's just more of kind of a prediction, if you will. So if you are interested in this, give it a big old thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what skincare brand or sunscreen brand you would like to hear the history of next. And I will take those into consideration. So let's get going. It's going to be a fun one. We are starting off with the brand La Roche Posay. We've all heard of La Roche Posay. I feel like La Roche Posay is one of those brands that's just kind of been there. It's just a cornerstone of the skincare sunscreen market, and we've seen it. We've probably tried something from them, and I wanted to know kind of the history of it. I actually was a history major in college, um, and then I switched to anthropology, but I still, you know, my love for history is still very much there. So I got interested in kind of learning about it because I've seen all these products. I've tried so many of them. Recently, I really realized that it's one of those brands for at least for sunscreens that I just adore. So I thought I would start with them. It's as good of a place as any to start. So let's start with the origin of La Roche-Posay. The brand itself was founded in 1975 in the French town by the same names of La Roche-Posay. I, I Googled it, <laughs> it's true. I want to go there now. I want to just like be in La Roche-Posay and then apply all their La Roche-Posay products. Um, dating back to the 1400s, the town of La Roche-Posay was really known for the prevalence of their mineral spring water, which if you know anything about the brand, they also are very adamant about the use of thermal spring water in their products. So those two are heavily intertwined and it makes a lot of sense that they would do so. The water is said to be soothing and curing and really kind of can cure things from eczema to dry skin to any other conditions that people may have. So allegedly there was a man that, by the name of Bertrand du Gosselin. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't speak French, but I did Google how to pronounce it and I will put it here and you can tell me how bad I pronounced it, but I tried. <laughs> so he was the one who discovered this thermal spring waters in the town of La Roche-Posay and he stopped there to quench his thirst. Some people said that his horse stopped and the horse had some bad um, skin disease and it cured the horse. Others say that it was him and it basically cured him or the horse and he noticed this and that was kind of the start of these thermal springs. Fast forward to the 17th century and some analyses were done on the water and it was proven that it was high in selenium, which would kind of explain some of these thermal spring conditions and um, the attributes the water has for maybe improving skin's health. Okay, so we all know Napoleon. It was said that in the 19th century, on his way back from a campaign in Egypt, he stopped there, had a hospital built basically to cure the soldiers' skin conditions. So another like kind of added layer to the lore of the La Roche-Posay town and water. A few more dates in history. In 1897, the site was officially recognized by the French Academy of Medicine. In 1905, the thermal center was opened for the management of skin diseases and disorders like eczema, psoriasis. Patients would come from all over the world to be treated by doctors there. In 1913, the French Academy of Medicine formally recognized the town of La Roche-Posay as a thermal spa town. Yeah. Spa town, <laughs> never heard of it, but that's what they did. <laughs> so this was to recognize the skincare benefits from the water and then give the town its due benefit or recognition, there you go. And then of course, 
all the way to 1975, like I said before, which is the founding of the brand La roche in the town of La roche It's not founded or it's not headquartered there anymore, but it all comes from that town. The water, of course, is going to be from there as well. And then we have modern day, which is now we have La roche across the world. You have multiple Instagram and TikToks in the US, EU, um, Australia, Canada, everywhere. So it's one of the most recognizable brands out there. And it is, I mean, it's been around now for over 40 years, almost 50. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the modern day space that La Roche-Posay holds in the skincare cosmetics kind of industry. So in 2006, the company revolutionized the sunscreen market with the creation of one of their most innovative sunscreens. This is... And Philios, you've probably heard of it. You've probably heard of me speak about it. It's one of those kind of, um, I guess, sub fields of the brand that is just so widely recognized and they have Anthelios this, Anthelios that. And it's just part of like the, the history and the um, image of. So that contains Mexoral SX, which is a UV filter. And it was just kind of a revolutionary filter on the market. And they continue to push these boundaries with their filters. Um, they have UV Mune now, which is, or UV Mune 400, which is a UVA uh, filter. So they're continuing to do so, and they do spend quite a bit on research and development. And then 2008, we have more renovate, renovation, no, innovation. <laughs> so they combine their sunscreen filters with antioxidants. And this is known as the cell dash OX, cell ox shield. So this is supposed to help reduce free radicals and also protect against UV rays. So it's another innovation that a lot of brands then kind of carried off of, um, but UV, or but 2008 is the mark of that innovation for the brand. Okay, so let's get into the heart of the brand. I've already spoken a little bit about it, but I would say that obviously the main aspect of the heart of the Roche-Posay is its mineral spring water. And this thermal spring water is basically the result of rainwater flowing for thousands and thousands of years over vast expanses of limestone. And those limestone rocks also contain selenium. So we get the most pure and kind of neutral pH water that you can get. Um, and it's supposed to be free from pollution, not treated in any sort of way. And that is kind of the heart of the products from La Roche-Posay. So furthermore, selenium is supposed to be a powerful antioxidant, which helps protect the skin from oxidative stress, which is part of the reason we have um, kind of premature aging. It also plays a fundamental role in fighting against free radicals. Like I said before, that's part of the UV filters plus the antioxidants combined into the cellox shield. So when we're looking across the board, that is pretty much the heart of the brand and this thermal spring water, which can also be found in other brands, but that is what they say is the heart of their brand. Okay, this part is exciting for me because this is the, I would say, product cornerstones of the brand. So we have a few different kinds. You've probably heard of them. I've probably spoken about them, but I'm just gonna list them out and then we'll go over the specs of each one. So first we have Anthelios, then we have Tolerane, then we have Lipicar and Cicaplast. I hope I'm saying them right. <laughs> there are also others, but those are the four that I'm gonna cover because I would say that those are kind of the most popular. So let's go a little bit more in depth about each one. Anthelios sunscreens contain an exclusive cell ox shield technology, which is for broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection, plus the antioxidants we spoke about earlier to help protect the skin from free radicals. And next up, we have Tolerain. This is mainly for sensitive skin. This line includes minimalistic formulas with carefully selected ingredients for even the most sensitive skin. These are allergy tested, fragrance free, paraben free, and products for all skin types. Next up, Lipicar. <laughs> I think that's my favorite name. The Lipicar line consists of body and face solutions for dry to extra dry skin and eczema. The formulas contain shea butter, glycerin, niacinamide, which help soothe and moisturize the skin. And then the last one I'll be covering today is the Cicaplast. So these are supposed to soothe and protect dry and damaged skin with Cicaplast. When I think of Cicaplast, I think of the barrier creams that really help protect if you have um, a damaged skin barrier. And these products are definitely meant for the whole family because I also think of putting um, some of the Cicaplast products on small children. A few other details of all of the products. I would say that they are pretty mid-range products. You get a little bit closer to the higher end on some of their products, especially the serums and with more active ingredients in it. 
but the price range is pretty affordable for most people and they are also supposed to be minimalistic and efficacious formulas. So you're never going to buy something that is overly scented. I, most of their products, I believe all of them are fragrance free. They're hypoallergenic and they're non-comedogenic. So the main goal is to really get you this effective and minimalistic product in the formula that they deliver it through. Okay. I don't have much for this next category, but we are going to cover controversies. So in 2001, I would say the main controversy kind of in the skincare and sunscreen space was the, the Purito controversy. I don't know why I use air quotes because it was a real thing. <laughs> um, but this was obviously more centered around Purito and some of the Korean sunscreens. But I think it kind of seeped over into all sunscreens and people were really questioning the validity of the SPF rating and the PA rating on sunscreen. Now, it didn't necessarily touch La Roche-Posay like it did Purito, but there have been other times in history where there have been scandals within the European sunscreen community. So it's kind of one of those things, it just heightens the awareness of the protection and making sure that you are actually getting that SPF from the sunscreen you're wearing. Another kind of controversy, which I wouldn't say again, is specific to just La Roche-Posay, but in the last few years, especially with the emergence of clean beauty in um, sunscreen and skincare, there has been this raging controversy and just dialogue discussion about mineral and chemical sunscreens. And of course it has hit La Roche-Posay as well. So I think there's been a big push to kind of have these better mineral formulas, which I'm all for, like I want the best formulas for either, but it's definitely kind of this thing where chemical sunscreens are seen as bad and you can't use them and they're toxic, whereas mineral sunscreens are the best for you and your body and your kids and everything. And I think that has definitely influenced the products that they've launched lately. Um, but again, it's not exclusive to just La Roche-Posay, it's for all brands out there. And lastly, my future predictions. This is just my conjecture and hypotheses. Um, it has nothing to do with what the brand has said, but I think it's kind of, um, it's obviously related to the brand and kind of the future of where I see skincare and sunscreens going. So the first thing, and I'm not, I'm on TikTok, but I'm not really. I, I, I just don't go on there because I know it's a black hole and I'll spend an hour just scrolling mindlessly and I just don't have time for that. But I think, and I know what I was gonna say is I know that they are on TikTok. How can you not be this day and age? But I feel like they're going to do more partnerships with Instagram or TikTokers and kind of be a little bit more modern. When I look at their Instagram page or when I look at their websites, it's definitely more for a bit of an older demographic. Um, whereas TikTok is, you know, Gen Z and very young. Well, in my opinion, young to me. <laughs> um, so I do feel like they might try to target those audiences a bit more. I would say that their packaging and kind of the overall feel of it is very minimalistic, which some may like, but I think it doesn't necessarily speak to Gen Z as much. So we might see something a little bit more kind of modern in that sense. And then the other thing that I think, and they've already started doing, is to start having more sustainable practices. So you will see on some of their packaging, it comes in this kind of like um, brownish, like recycled looking packaging, and it is made from recycled plastic, I believe. Um, they do have some glass packaging, but not a lot. So I think they are gonna make a bigger push to having things a little bit more recyclable and a little bit more sustainable in their practices, um, just because I think that's a big thing coming down the pipe for skincare brands in general. All right, guys, so that is it for the roche Posay. I hope that was beneficial and informative. If I left anything out, it's only because this is my first time doing it, but I hope that I can do more of these. If there's anything else you want to know about the brands for future videos, just let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.